Welcome back to Anchor Designs. I'm James and I broke my welder and after many, many hours of trying to fix it, it stopped feeding um, and it's about 30 years old. So I did what most people did is I bought the Euro Torch adapter. Uh, that didn't work. So then I bought a gas solenoid to try and bodge that to work and that also didn't work. And then by the time I'd kind of finished, it didn't work. So I fixed it. I bought a new one and I'm not ashamed of that. Let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so last week off camera, I wanted to kind of get back into a first off using my new Evolution uh, Rage chop saw and getting back into kind of welding. So, uh, off camera, I made this, which is a scroll saw uh, station table with uh, underneath storage, which is gonna be a future video. And it was a nightmare actually trying to make it. I did start to record it, but the problems that I was having with my MIG welder, massive pain in the ass. So, uh, <coughs> I started looking for a MIG welder and I've kind of been out of that world for, well, quite a bit of time industrial usings i was using like kempies and millers and that type of thing when we're at work but i just haven't got the budget for doing that um i tried to buy locally so i spoke to i won't name them because it's a bit unprofessional um but i found that most of the industrial supplies that i uh made an inquiry to just weren't interested in dealing with people in the sheds which is fair enough you know they probably get a lot of dreamers which i get uh so I've heard a lot of good things about Artec. I've recently just acquired a new 160 TIG welder from them. Uh, and it's, it's great. It's probably even better in someone in a bit more capable hands. Uh, but I was really enjoying it. I wanted to try and buy local. So I did make an inquiry to the place that you're probably thinking of, the green machines. And they are allegedly made in the UK. Um, and, uh, yeah, as soon as I told them it's from a workshop, they weren't interested. So I went to Artec and spoke to those guys. I spoke to a guy called, uh, Mick. Um, I think it was Mick and the guy was absolutely brilliant. I explained my situation. I explained what I wanted, my budget. He kind of held my hand and, uh, to full disclaimer here, I paid, almost full price for this. Um, they gave me like a loyalty bonus for having the TIG welder and coming back to them. So I got 5% off and I asked for some stickers. So thank you Artec for the lovely stickers. Now you hear a lot on forums and the Chinese and the crap and you know, you, you hear it all and don't get me wrong for people who are industrial environment, go ahead, buy a Kempi, buy a Miller, buy a Fronius. That's very nice, but I'm making stuff in my shed. making. So what did I buy? I bought what's a their most popular model I'm told. It's their bread and butter type machine. It's 180 amps um, single phase MIG welder. We'll show you a few more close-ups. I'm going to finish off getting this unwrapped and let's take a closer look. Okay, so I have unwrapped everything and I'm kind of just going through all the, uh, the bits and bobs. So gas line, you've got an earth lead, which is the slightly thicker, uh, thinner core, and you've got a MIG torch. So this is a three meter long torch, which is going to be quite nice. I think my last one was a meter and a half, bit of a nightmare. Uh, you have two options. You can either have the 16 amp supply, which is your blue plug uh, that you'd fit into the wall. And if you are a garage worker like me, then you're going to need that uh, domesticated supply installed. Uh, comfortably, this machine will run up to about 140 amps on just your standard uh, three pin plug, which for the majority of things that I do, that'll be more than sufficient. If I need to go bigger, I've got a, a stick welder. Uh, so, you know, if I'm doing anything plus four mil, I'm going to stick weld it. Got some tips. 
a tip spanner, not a wrench. And I've got a regulator, which I didn't know I was getting actually. That's great. New regulator, some new gloves, not the nicest of quality, but free gloves. And I've also got a, um, some new welding wire. Now, a lot of people who will be looking for a welding machine, you can either get, I think the 1.5 kg, you can get the 5 kg ones, which look like these. And these kind of last me forever. So a lot of the things that I do, I weld in 0.8 because it's kind of like an all-rounder for me. I used to do a lot of body work, so a lot more thinner gauge. Um, so I'll be using 0.6, but the majority of things that I'm doing now is kind of around that one to, to three mil with this and 0.8 kind of works well for me. 90% of what I do is two mil um, with a MIG welder. Spool, this is the 5kg one. If you want a bigger machine, this will not work with your bigger reels. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so straight up, not use this at all. No idea how this opens. Ooh, ooh, that is nice. That is nice. So your spool is gonna be going onto here. This is your wire feeder. We'll set that up a little bit later on, but this is nice. This is, this is really cool. No fasteners that you need to dick around with. That's great. Plenty of cable on the back, and this is not your kind of thin, you know, um, desk cable crap that you're gonna be getting. It's a fairly sturdy looking machine. Um, let's look at the front. So with this machine as well, it gives you the option to have a spool gun. So if you're doing something like aluminium, well, if you are doing aluminium or you're thinking about doing it, it gives you the capabilities of using a spool gun, which is nice. It's something that you won't be seeing on my channel, probably. Uh, you've got your MMA, which is your stick welder. If you do want to be doing that, then you're going to be needing to buy a torch. Uh, sold separately of course uh, you have your led display which is quite nice this section here is for your spool gun everything's indicated to show you what you need most importantly you've got your amp settings and you've got your wire speed uh, negative positive and this is your uh, torch lead that we're going to be putting in now Okay, so your earth lead is going to be going onto your uh, negative. So these are a larger DINs connector. So the cheap, cheap welders have the miniature versions of these. This is like a good industrial size. So it's just something nice that if you are looking up from maybe a smaller stick machine and you want to use that earth lead, this is a, a 35 to 55 millimeter DINs, which is quite good. So we're just going to put him. Don't over tighten these, you don't need to swing on them, the, you know, they're not going anywhere. Now, when you do get a new torch for a MIG welder, what I like to do is, is kind of when you finish up in the workshop is leave it out nice and straight. And all that's gonna do is give a chance for your liner to kind of straighten out. It's, it's a bit OCD, you don't need to do that, but I'll just, you know, they tighten them up pretty tight when they're coming from the factory. So. Okay, next off is going to be your regulator. Now, I might not use this because I'm a little bit picky with my regulators. Um, depending on what connection I've got on the back. Yeah, I think I'm going to use mine. The, the simple reason um, behind it is, is I prefer mine. Um, because I've already got mine set up. Uh, typically, I'm gonna be around 12, um, 12 to 14 liters per minute when I'm setting up. You've got your, your pressure on the left and your um, usage onto the right. Okay, as we mentioned earlier on, our next job is uh, we're going to put the plug on the end again i'm not i'm not going to put it on my 16 amp supply i've got a table saw and some dust extraction on the way so i'm going to use those plugs for that uh, i would just like to mention if you're not comfortable doing this if you're 12 or you're from liverpool then seek an adult's help
A few inches later. Okay, so let's talk the wire feeding system, which is this bit here. Um, so all you want to do is lift that back, that just knocks off. And typically on welders, I hope this one is, it looks like it. Don't lose that bit. You've got, oh, there you go, on one side, you're going to have your 0.6. So if you are using your 0.6 welding wire, so if you're restoring your car, or you're doing a bit of thin gauge stuff, whatever you're doing, you're going to want typically 0.6. Uh, and then if you're doing what I'm doing, a little bit thicker, using 0.8. But these are part marked individually, so you can see which side you want. So we're going to go 0.8 onto here. There's a locating wood rough key on here, just don't dick that up. Next is your wire. Uh, let's do all this first, reassemble this puppy dog. Now with it, as we've mentioned, this is a lower loading, whatever you want to call it. Some welding machines are up here, down here, up here, down here. My last one was up here. So you'd put this on the other way. This is, we're going to go lower. So the feed comes off at the bottom end of the wheel. springy and this doesn't really matter where that goes she's tension on here now what we're going to do is i'm just going to start fresh a little bit get rid of that keep that it's really good for spraying stuff you know if you do a lot of painting or if you do do a bit of tig welding that's quite handy sometimes just to have a bit of mig wire yes you can do that you can. Okay, so you're just going to want to feed this right up until... I'm going to go for around there. I'm just going to tighten this up so this doesn't move. Because what you'll have, if you let this go, bad things will happen everywhere. It will just go everywhere. But before we do that, let's look at the torch. Okay, so the machine is now plugged in and everything is looking nice, juicy and tight. Uh, put your earth lead somewhere where you're not going to be an idiot. If you've got a steel workbench, lucky you. Uh, but this is nowhere near anywhere the wire is going to go. But just be mindful of that. You know, don't be a knob. Okay, I like to start off with my wire speed being really, really slow. We're just going to tighten this back up on here. And I'm going to go for around two. Everything's kind of nice and tidied up. Just to give yourself a fighting chance, you're going to try and make this as straight as possible. And you'll see now that we're going to be starting to feed wire through. Just visually make sure that nothing's kind of spinning or touching here. Come on. There you go. Takes a little bit of time though. I was, I was getting a, bit, a little bit worried there. But there you go. Uh, and all you're going to do... Let's turn it off. Cut off a little bit of the end here. And we want a point eight. Go. I've never had one of these fancy spanners before, so I've never made them this tight before, but I'll include it. So now we've got that all set up. You don't need a lot of um, coming out from the end. And you want to put your shroud back on that you haven't just lost. Like so. Nice. Well, that's a bit annoying. Every welder I've always had in the past, I've always got a, um, a little plastic uh, aerosol can lid, and you can just kind of chuck all your, uh, you know, your spare shroud and your spare tips in there to put in just like that. And I usually get a glue stick, get a lighter, 
and just melt the bottom of it and stick that down. But it's making me a little bit nervous it being that close to this, but yeah, I might give it a go. I can always cut it down. Smaller lids are available. Okay, next off, we are going to be fitting the regulator here, and this is the uh, lead that they actually give you, your tubing, and these are a standard fitting on either side. You will notice that these are domed. They are not tapered fittings. People always say these are tapered fittings. They're most certainly not. These are straight couplings with uh, rounded edges in here. That's heavily chamfered, so these seal on here. There is no need to put PTFE tape on these and there's no need to use an adjustable spanner tightening these up. It's 19 mil, get the proper spanner, knob this on here, and you're gonna be fine. What I usually do is get a bit of leak tester, it's dead cheap, or a bit of fairy liquid. That should be done. You don't have to swing on this. You know. Now I don't have a welding trolley. I've had welding trolleys. I've never made one that I've actually liked. I just can't get on with them. Um, so I just put this under my bench now. One thing I would have quite liked, although it might restrict airflow, is a 90 degree on there. You know, that's something I might add. So it's just something that you can put flat against somewhere. These always break. If you smash these, breathe on them or fart on them, you're gonna smash these. So just be really careful on these corners. I've had so many welders with these just break. Don't tug on here. Um, yeah, I might, I won't, but I can talk about maybe doing it. Uh, <laughs> just protecting this little piece here. This should be okay. If anything, I'd rather have this break than that break, um, but yeah. Okay, so um, I'm gonna give it a night. It's a bit late here. It's kind of bonfire Friday night. It's not bonfire night, but everybody uses it for a night. Okay, so what I've started doing around two years ago now is I bought a Hobby Weld gas bottle. And yeah, so far so good. It's fairly easy to do. I've got a distributor about three miles away from the house now, which is super nice. And roughly speaking, that's gonna cost you about 70 pounds-ish. I'll put everything up on the screen. Uh, 70 pounds for the deposit. They give you a blue um, bit of paper if you lose that and you wanna take your bottle back for whatever reason. Uh, they won't give you your deposit back because they've got no proof of you using it. So I've laminated mine, stored mine in a bottle and uh, you know it's somewhere safe. So if I do decide that I don't want this bottle anymore, I can get my 70 quid back. Refills, I want to say, are around 40, 45 pounds to get it refilled. And how long is it lasting me? Well, I did quite a few jobs. Um, it's very difficult to actually say, you know, how long does your bottle last? Well, I don't know. It's lasted me for quite a while. I've just recently filled mine up. This is a fresh bottle and I've done one project on it so far. And so far, so good. It's quite good. It's quite simple. Um, it's like me, really. Good night. We'll see you in the morning. The next day. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, and I've just been farting about and playing with it. And I'm just using my very, very basic welding table here, which is just a bit of stainless. I know not ideal for cross contamination and all that. Absolutely fine. One thing I have noticed is it's quite loud. So, uh, you know, if you have got some music in the background or, you know, you are a quieter worker, uh, it is bloody loud this which is fine, because uh, I'm not going to be using it a lot of the time, but um, I'll see if I can get like a decibel reading from it and just, you know, so you guys know. Uh, I haven't got a steel worktop bench. I would very much like one. It's probably something that I am definitely working on at the minute. So I'm just using this table. Um, one thing I did mention earlier on is about these gloves. These are bloody lovely. These are actually really, really good from the ones that I've used. Uh, these are made by uh, Predator by ROM. Yeah, they're quite nice. Typically what I use is my TIG gloves for even my MIG because I'm only doing a very, very thin um, wall box section for, you know, what these are really used for. So uh, let's jump straight into it. So we're going to start off just with these test samples. Again, it's not the most ideal of setup for doing this, uh, but this is just some two mil plate, uh, just some flat bar. We've just cleaned up the mill scale of these. 
and we're just going to put some beads down. I did watch a video last night of a Geordie fellow who uh, actually reviewed this. I've not done, I don't like to look at other people's reviews before I do my own. It's kind of, you know, you can tell when people have done that. Um, and he did a really good one. He was um, kind of MIG welding, I think like eight and 10 mil flat bar. I'm not going to be doing that here because I don't use that. I don't think most of the people would, who buy a hobby machine be doing that. I'm just making assumptions. I'm probably wrong. Uh, and I don't have any. So I'm just going to be doing the kind of the run of the mill type stuff. I've got some exhaust pipe, some flat bar, some thicker box section that's a uh, three, four mil wall. So it's just going to give you a nice comparison. Okay, this is just a butt joint here. Uh, quite nice, very easy to use, very constant arc. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite nice. Uh, again, just a butt weld, not the prettiest. Got a bit of spatter up on the top. Did clean this off, but hey ho, I'm a hobby welder now. I haven't touched uh, thicker stuff MIG welding in quite some time. I've just done this, um, this bead at the bottom and it's doing quite nice. There is a little bit of a contamination there and we're just getting a little bit of bubbling. Um, maybe a little bit too... No, that's quite nice actually. You know, I'll take that. It's been a while, gents. It's been a while. Give, a, give the lad a break. Uh, but no, it's really nice. Um, and these gloves, genuinely, I'm not... You know, these are... This is a revelation here, gents. So that's quite nice. Um, let's try doing some thin to thicker wall stuff. We'll see how we go down there. We're gonna drop the amperage, drop the wire speed and see how we're gonna go. This is, it takes a real man to put your welding onto YouTube. Let me tell you that. Now, this is completely just off the cuff here. Okay, there's a few stop starts that we had onto here. Uh, let me just get the focus right here. It's not my prettiest of job, but this is very much off the cuff here. Again, pretty thick wall here to some thinner stuff. Uh, there's quite a burr on that, so it looks thicker than it actually is. But even so, that's, you know, that's, I'm pretty happy with that. This is going to leave you quite a nice, um, you know, quite a nice finish. The arc is really bright, nice. Welds like a new welder. Um, I don't know how much more you want to see. I'll just whack another bead down here. I'll try and get you in a bit of a closer look. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't got a uh, welding lens, but we'll see what we can do here. If you are interested as well, I've been using uh, these Abrax. These are the ceramic flap discs, and these are bloody brilliant. These are great. Um, I've used this for about three welding projects now, this one in particular flap disc, and it's done a heck of a lot of prep work, a lot of linishing, it's been great. a bit of a Sammy the Snake that.
yeah, okay, it's kind of nice. I was a little bit on the piss there, but, uh, you know, um, but it's fairly even for what we're doing here. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with the results. Let's, uh, let's go on to the summary. Okay, well, let's summarize on our RTEC 180 MIG welder. So um, I've got to say, I ordered this on Thursday. Today is Saturday, it arrived yesterday. Um, very, very well packaged. Customer service was actually fucking brilliant, to be honest. The guys was just great. Um, kind of held my hand of what I actually wanted. It was really dead simple. Um, so far so good what i'll be doing in these kind of reviews is probably doing a six month review you're going to be seeing this in a lot of my upcoming welding projects which is next on the uh, to-do list so if you do want to check those out make sure you hit that subscribe give me a like if you like what you see um back to it i would recommend this so far so good it's very early doors it might break who knows um, but we will do in six months so uh again if you want to see that hit the uh, notification bell and you'll be seeing this probably next year time. Um, it's a really good high-end hobby machine. Um, you know, I know people who use this in the professional environment, I'm sure. Um, and yeah, it's good. It works. You've seen it works. I would recommend it. Uh, the guy I've spoken with, with both my TIG and MIG, I think it's Mick or Mike, uh, the bloke was really good, really patient, asked a few silly questions, as everybody does. Um, yeah, it's the kind of place you want to deal with. I don't want to be dealing with welding agencies. I want to deal direct with agent people, you know, subsidiaries, whatever. Um, and I want decent support and backup. You know, next day delivery, got free delivery of this. Gave me a little bit of discount. And, um, you know, if Artec does watch this video, then thank you. This is a great welder for someone who wants hassle-free, plug it in, do the job, no dicking around, and it works. And if something does go wrong, I've got a three-year warranty, and there's an excellent support network with that as well. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Stay well, stay safe, and uh, see you in the next one. Thank you.